Yo ho and welcome back to a new review for yet another finished show of the spring season. It's SAO Alternative Gun Gale Online. Ah, a show that is pretty much my or one of my favorites of the season. Because from start to finish it was a fun ride. I had to laugh in every single episode and you know what? It is doing all the things you hate in the original SAO. Right. We have fun characters, we have relatable characters, we have characters with a clear motivation of why the hell they are even playing the game. And then we always get the show making fun of the super serious melodramatic bullshit of SAO by trying to get into it and then it's just like yeah, nah, not going there let's kick it out of the window so overall I will get it out of the way at the beginning it's an incredible fun show with really nice quality. I love the character designs. And yeah, the soundtrack isn't by Yuki Kajiura, but it doesn't need to be. Because this show is so strong on its own that even with a weaker soundtrack, you don't really notice it. So, what's the spin-off about. We follow Karen, aka Len, in-game, who is, in real life, really tall. I think it's taller than 180. For a Japanese girl, this is tall. And she's really troubled by it, to the point that it's a trauma. And then her best friend got her into VR MMOs and she tried a bunch of different ones to the point that it was about 30 or so and there was even the joke about because she was using the VR headset thing and with a safe the measure of forcing you out of the game when there's something wrong with your body. And this happens when she logged in, saw how sh tall her character is in-game, so that this was enough to cause a panic for her, so that she was forced to log out. Which is, on its own, hilarious. And then she tried a bunch of games until she found herself in GGO as a cute little chibi she wanted to be in real life so she started the game as the chibi made a name for herself as the pink devil met other characters and participated in a team deathmatch because the sponsor of the team deathmatch was motivated by the GGO events with Kirito and Shinon. So he was like, yeah, instead of the deathmatch at all, let's do a team one and call it Squad Jam. Yeah, that's basically how we get the different types of squad gems. Even the author of the light novel of SAO Alternative had a really nice self-insert as a novelist in his 50s who is a gun maniac. 
Well, if you watch anime, if you know a bit about the light novel scene, you know that this one is no other than Keiichi Sixawa, the author of Kino no Tabi. And you see quite a lot of this as well because this show lives on the characters, be it Len, be it Peter, be it M. Yeah, there's someone who is called M. And it's explained in the last episode, which is hilarious, because he's basically a stalker who was tamed by real-life Pito. And we have the Squad Jam. The first one is with Len and M as a team, and they win. And the second one is Len and her best friend, with a focus of a match between Len's team and Pito's team. And Pito is now working together with M. And yeah, no one of them is winning the campers. It's always the campers. So, the promise between Pito and Lem was basically if Len wins against Pito when they have their all out battle Pito will meet Len in real life and then there's also the, a certain singer Len really likes and is a huge fan of and no surprise Pito is that same singer. And the thing is, this show didn't even try to hide this fact. It was like, yeah, it is there, we are not hiding it. If you think it's it, yeah, you are right. If you think it's someone else, yeah, you clearly haven't seen more than two animes or TV shows or any sort of media. But the thing is, what makes this show so funny is how realistic it is showing of the gaming side of life. The viewers who were watching the Squad Jam. Seriously, add some Kappa emotes and you think you have a Twitch chat the animation. So. It was really fun. The other thing is, like I've said, it was making fun of SAO. There was even a line said by Len, which is pretty much, yeah, this is not sorted out online, man. <laughs> because M was going on like, yeah, but I will die and stuff like this. And Len was like, yeah, this is not SAO, man. Calm down. So. It's funny, and with Peter, she's kind of obsessed with the dying in real life, when dying in-game. Because she was really hyped for SAO, and then she couldn't get into it, because real life. So yeah, the fact that this show is making fun of SAO, while being a spin-off of SAO, which is a much better written story on its own. So, the question is, is GGO only good because it is not SAO? No. They're fun, they're making jokes about SAO, but this doesn't make GGO good because it's not SAO. Because this story could be just as good as it is, even without being connected to the SAO universe. And the closest things we have is the mentioning of SAO as the death game, and the name drop of Shinon. And also Yuki, because Len's best friend got her ass kicked by Yuki. 
So these are basically the only full-on connections we have with SAO. Except the name and the title and the borrowed universe of GGO. But other than this, this show works perfectly fine on its own. It's all about the characters. And if you replace the SAO jokes and the name drops of SAO characters with something else, just as funny. So yeah, go and watch it. It's a fantastic show. It is so funny. It makes you laugh. And the action, the action is so good. The gun battles, so good. I really love it. And we don't really see guns that much. Most of the time it's swords and sorcery. So yeah, like I've said, go and watch it. Enjoy it. And for the god of love. Praise for a second season. Because this is what I will do. And the light novels are available in English. At least the first volume was released. A few days ago. So yeah. That's it for now. As always, thanks for watching and I hope I will see you guys next time as well. See ya!